Drag racing fan, it's the Monday Morning Racer once again for what is a quarantine special for Drag Racing TV. All of it brought to you by strutmasters.com, the suspension experts. We've caught up with Robbie and Dylan Scott of Scott's Ford in Tryon, North Carolina. Robbie, Dylan, look, let me ask first and foremost, having a Ford dealership under these unusual circumstances that we're in currently with the coronavirus, how has that affected you all in business? Sure, you got the essential side of it, but you also got the sell side, which I know many may not think is as essential. So what's happening in that dynamic of business with a dealership? Well, first of all, Lee, thank you all for having us on Drag Racing TV this morning. I'll kind of start this. Uh, me and son, me and my son Dylan both are owners of this. My dad bought this store in 1981, and my dad's still around. He'll be 82 in May. He comes to work every day, uh, but he's not been here the last two weeks since this virus has hit. But he comes and checks on us every day. Uh, we had great leadership from him growing up. But you know, we're kind of in unprecedented times right now. But you know, the car business has seen its share of ups and downs. The late 70s, early 80s, when my dad bought this store, uh, Ford business was really bad, and he took a gamble, and we came through that. And then 2007, 2008, the financial, you know, sort of collapse. That was a bad time for the car business. Uh, but you know, this is all we know. This is all we've ever done. Is is my family? Is that's all we've ever done? Is car business? And uh, my family was actually in the Chevrolet business before this store became available. And we're having to do a lot of things different. You know, business, business, the way we do business is changing, it's changing every day. But we have, uh, we have 33 employees who've been with us a, a really long time. Uh, some of them's been here over 30 years and we've owned this store going on almost 40 years. So we've got, really super employees who believe in us they're behind us this is tough financial times but thank god we're we're in we're in good financial shape we're going to weather this storm and it's like my dad said you know the car business has been good to us sometimes you got to pay some of it back so that's kind of what we're doing now and dylan takes care of the the service parts and body shop for me and uh I'll kind of let him tell you what, how they're kind of doing things different, the way Ford has changed things since this has come out. It's definitely, definitely a, little, a lot different. Um, but Ford has been really good with us as far as giving us kind of tips as far as you know sanitizing cars, which we've been doing, you know, making people more comfortable with that. Um, and we've actually been really busy um, in service side. But we've had to go pick up, you know, customers' cars, deliver them back. So we're, you know, kind of going out of our way to make them comfortable. Don't want them coming out. Uh, where we're at is kind of a retirement community, so a lot of older people. But, you know, we've been really blessed so far and been busy, um, you know, for everything expected. We've been been pretty pretty good so far. Awesome. Well, guys, look, I'm definitely excited to talk to you both owning a Ford dealership. I threw my Ford hat on today. I've always wanted to be sponsored by Ford, and this is the closest I've ever got. So I'm rather <laughs> excited about it. Now, with you having the Ford dealership, you just mentioned that in the past the family was associated with Chevy. I got to ask, why the switch and why Ford now and today? Why that brand? I'll tell you a funny story about that. Uh, they, my family sold the dealership and the, the Chevrolet dealership. They, they owned it for 12 years. They sold it in 1979. It was just down the street from, from where we're at now. So this store became available in 1981. Ford was actually in the process of closing it down because it was an underperforming store. So my dad had decided he was going to purchase this store, build it back up to profitability, and then sell it within five years. So I kind of tell everybody now, we're still 39 years later trying to get it back to profitability. <laughs> 
that's a good one. That's a good one, man. Now, not only do you own a Ford dealership, but in fact, you to our Ford drag racers. You use the product, you get out there in the drag strip and you are running the brand. So as owners of a dealership that happen to also be drag racers, how does business flow into the sport of drag racing? How does the sport of drag racing flow into business? I mean, is it true that you win on Sunday, sell on Monday? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, we actually, um, we sponsor uh, Division Two Top Sportsman, the dealership. Uh, we've actually got a lot of customers in Florida that we drag race with. So we are very like, lucky to have, you know, a bunch of friends and customers in drag racing. But it, it's definitely true you win on Sunday, sell on Monday. <laughs> and even though we're in North Carolina, you would be surprised how many vehicles we sell down in the lower part of Georgia and in Florida. We sell quite a few vehicles down that way. And we do free delivery. Here you go. <laughs> free delivery, man. That's even better than the pizza shops. That's awesome, guys. <laughs> well, my wife owns a pizza shop here in town also. So so we got the car business and the food side covered. Guys, when I get back down south, we're talking. That's all I got to say. I <laughs> cars and pizza, that's right up my alley. I'm good well, to know you too. Now, look, I saw this post from one of your social media feeds. I thought this was interesting. Uh, Robbie, you posted this back in June of last year. It says, proud dad today. Dylan drove to a runner-up finished today in Bristol. Car slowed up in the finals, but a great weekend for Scott's Ford Racing. All cars on sale next week. Was that true? Did all the cars get on sale next week? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> anytime, anytime we have a good race weekend, we always try to coincide that with the following week and get our advertisement out there. Uh, we have a lot of partners that helps us. Philip Oakley, Oakley Motorsports up in Owensboro, Kentucky, does our engines. Uh, Marco Abruzzi, Transmissions, Greg Slack Converters, uh, Ford Motor Company, Moroso is a huge supporter of us. So we, we, what they give us, we try to give them more back. Sorry. So you mentioned earlier before this particular stream that the 67 Mustang that you all had that you did sell, that was a beautiful ride. But I think y'all have right now just as beautiful, if not even more beautiful, of a Mustang. Give me the rundown of the parameters and what you two are currently racing. So it's a 2018 uh, Mustang. It's actually painted like a GT350, um, painted up exactly like a factory Mustang. Uh, Jerry Haas Race Cars built it um, in Fenton, Missouri. And, man, they, they build a awesome race car. That's probably the best race car we've ever owned um, as far as responsive um, – can't ask for it to be any better. And it really, this car really responds to to changes. Whereas uh, in the past, I, I don't think we had a race car that that was this. It's hard to explain. You can move five pounds one way or another, and you will see a difference, whether it's good or bad. It it it, it makes a change. It's just very very adjustable. And Jerry Haas, John DeFlorian, all those guys out at Haas Race Cars just been unbelievable uh, they were really behind this project you know they normally do just pro stock cars pro mod is their bread and butter they really want to get into this top sportsman game and we're just really accommodating to us uh, when we were deciding on a chassis builder and they've just been first class all the way helped us any way they can and if you're at any national event anytime anytime we're up on the start line jerry haas is behind that race car so that means a lot to me yeah, uh, that he's invested in our program. Uh, you know, his bread and butter is on the pro side, but anytime that stops Ford Mustang is on the start line, Jerry Haas is behind it. You know, I've noticed Jerry myself in the pits going in and out, and he seems to almost be this uh, technical guy at the track helping the guys that have his cars, his chassis. What is Jerry like out at the track? How does he help people who have – Jerry Haas on their car at a national event. What does he do? Man, he, after every run, he normally rides his moped up and he checks on us. He'll look at the graph, you know, if we have any questions. I mean, whatever it is, he always checks on us after every run, you know, make sure we like what we've seen. Do I have any questions for him? And same thing, his shop foreman, John DeFlorian. I normally talk to John probably at least once every two or three weeks. You know, he'll call and check on us, make sure everything's going okay. If I have any four-link questions, um, you know, anything to run by them, they are, they are awesome. Um, 
they, you can't beat them as far as customer service. Guys, look, the NHRA announced last week the huge ramifications to the schedule in light of what we're dealing with with coronavirus. So I've got to ask, as sportsman racers, when you look at the new national event trail schedule, what shocked you? What are you excited about? What are going to be the challenges trying to go run top sportsmen at the national level with what they've made in the schedule changes? And I don't know about you, I actually haven't seen a full-fledged schedule like as far as where they're planning on running us yet or not. Um, I do know they're planning on moving the sportsman section of you know Atlanta National that they canceled to Gainesville. Um, I really hope we get to do that because I'm ready to go back racing. This whole quarantine deal has got me antsy. Um, but it's definitely going to be tricky because I know kind of just looking at the pro schedule, they've got some races stacked up, you know, back to back to back. And I know it's going to be tough on them guys, much less, you know, somebody like us. Um, so I'm kind of interested to see whenever they come out with the full sportsman schedule, um, what that's going to look like and where we're planning on running at. It's definitely going to have to map out the whole season all over again. Because it's just me and Dylan, uh, we work on the car. We don't have any hired help to do that. So, you know, running a business, I'm here to use at 7 o'clock every morning, and I never leave before 6 o'clock at night. Same with him. And then we, we've got a race shop there at between my dad's home and my home. And uh, so we have to service it. We have to do all the work on it ourselves. And it has to be done at night or on the weekend. So kind of interested with Dylan, like Dylan said, looking at the schedule, uh, seeing how many we're going to have stacked on each other. And, uh you know, we'll do our dead level best to uh, to make to make the ones that uh, that we can. But what we got to remember, and is you know, we all love drag racing. Uh, it was instilled in me and Dylan. My dad NASCAR raced for 33 years, so I've been around it my whole life, and we love it. We love the people. There's no better people in the world than in the racing world. But you know, what's going out? What's going on outside the world right now? outside of the drag racing, you know, it's serious. And, but like, like I was saying earlier, we're Americans. We're going to get through this. Uh, it's not going to be easy. We're going to come out of it with some cuts and bruises, but uh, we'll see, we'll see this through the other end and we'll be a better country for it when we come back on the other side. I have no doubt in my mind about that. I like something he actually, and I'm not joking, every single day he goes to and tells our employees we're one day closer to getting this deal over with. Every day he tells them that. That's the truth. We're one day closer to getting it behind us. We're going to make it through the other end. Well, as it says in the in the Psalms, joy cometh in the morning. The dawn will happen eventually on this whole entire deal. We'll move on from it. We'll have business as normal, and we'll be back at the drag strips ripping up the 1320 for our enjoyment, whether we're racers or uh, media or fans, whoever it might be. Now, with drag racing and in the NHRA at the sportsman level, guys, look, please take your time on this one. Really dive in for me for the benefit of those that are watching. What are the challenges as a sportsman racer in the NHRA? Look, I've listened to like Don O'Neill, Mr. Top Sportsman himself occasionally, and he's mentioned that you know, the NHRA could make some improvements for sportsman racers. I mean, you're smart guys. You've got a successful business. Maybe they should listen to those successful business owners a little bit more often and, uh, you know, present those challenges to the fans because often as one, fans don't make it down to your pits. Fans don't hear your plot. Sometimes the stands aren't really that full for your guys, except, you know, even though Pop Sportsman is a great class and people really ought to be up there, it's tough to go racing. And give us the time and clue us in just how tough it really is at that level. Well, you know, there, there's a lot of things that that I would probably like to see change. Now, let's be real. All the all the paying spectators that are there, they're there to see the pros. I, I totally get that. I enjoy watching them. I especially love the pro mods. Uh, I like the pro stock. Love the pro stock. Not so big of a fan of the, the fuel cars anymore. Uh, Big John Force fan. Uh, John's a great friend of ours and has been for years. He calls me, him and my dad have the same birthday, so he calls my dad uh, at least once a month. And uh, so John's been a great friend over the years. Sorry he's in a Chevrolet now, but I understand <laughs> that. But, you know, 
I, I think sometimes with the, the sportsman guys, and I'm not speaking just for top sportsmen, I'm speaking for, for, for all the classes, whereas, you know, we kind of get put in on the back burner or as a filler in between uh, the pro show. And, and I guess I, I get it because the spectators are paying to see the pros, but look, 220 mile an hour bracket racing, top dragster, top sportsman. You know, I, I raced, I, not not at his level. I didn't have the money to, to do it when, when I was doing it. And my dad, he, he didn't spend a lot of money on me racing. But to bracket race at 220 miles an hour, and you're looking over, trying to drive the finish line on, on another, you know, another competitor, that's pretty dang awesome in my book. Pretty dang awesome. And a lot of that is probably maybe even just spectators don't necessarily resonate with that. You know, they're drag racing is the first one to finish line, fastest one. And that's probably got a lot to do with that, I'm, I'm sure. Um, I would think. Yeah. Bracket racing, if you're not from, a, from a, a, a drag racing bracket, from a drag racing background, bracket racing can be difficult to understand. And, and, and I get that. But, you know, Maybe if we was on the stage a little more and they got to see it, hey, come by our pits. We'll be glad to explain it to you. We'd love to see it. Yeah, do you think, you know, the NHRA could work something out where, I don't know, maybe a lottery, maybe a rotation of some type with some top sportsman guys or some top dragster guys and, you know, get them closer to the pros, a few of them, and get that extra exposure and rotate guys through? Or, or maybe if, you know, I'm just – speculating here maybe if you won and you were a top sportsman car a top dragster and you won uh, best car and show you get elevated in the pits a little bit and you get some more exposure do you think something like that might need to be implemented and people build those relationships with people on down the ranks as it were i definitely think that would be an awesome idea you know like i said the more exposure you get you know where we're parked most of the time people aren't going to walk down there it's kind of a you know a long way from the from the pro guys you know, if they did have some of us up there, you know, we get to talk to them, you know, make interactions, teach them about bracket racing, teach them about top sportsmen. You know, they're more than likely to stay in the stands and watch us and, and probably get hooked on it because it is a very interesting class. And I would even say, let's get off the national event side a little bit and promote the divisional races. There's seven divisions throughout the United States and we're lucky enough, proud enough to be the title sponsor for the top sportsman series in division two. And, you know, we have some great, awesome, fast racing in division two. We have a great division director and Rich Schaefer and uh, his assistant, Cody Savage, Harry Ferrari. They do a great job. They prepare a safe racetrack for us. And we go to some really nice venues and we draw pretty decent amount of spectators. So that gives us a chance to interact more with the spectators on the divisional side because you know, the top sportsman, top dragster, we have the preferred parking. Uh, so we get to interact more with the fans at, at the divisional side than we do the than we do the national event side. And, you know, there's 49 division races, I think, throughout the country. So somewhere around everybody in the United States, there's a divisional race. Check it out. I'm, I'm telling you, go out and check it out. There's some very good racing there. Definitely. The divisional races have some great racing going on, whether it's top sportman, top dragster, when the alcohol cars show up. Oftentimes there's point battles going on that hardly no one ever hears about. You know, someone might have come out of another division, almost act as a blocker at a divisional race for another one and create those weird point situations. It can get quite interesting and exciting at the divisional level. Speaking of the division level, what's the home drag strip? Where do y'all often go and uh, rip up the quarter mile? The closest drag strip, like as far as quarter mile racetrack, us is probably either Atlanta or Bristol. Um, maybe even Charlotte. They're really all like within an hour and a half. Um, really lucky to kind of have them close. Um, the closest drag strip we have is, is Greer Dragway in Greer, South Carolina. It's a little eighth mile place. I normally, you know, if I've got something I want to test, I can go over there and make some short hits. Um, that way I have to drive an hour and a half. But I would say uh, Bristol is by far my favorite racetrack. Uh, it always has been. It's it's slow. It's a slow racetrack. It's usually a tenth slower uh, than than other racetracks. Even though the nitrous, we can make up uh, quite a bit of that. But man, 
I've, I've been going to Bristol since the late 70s uh, when the old racetrack was there. Love it. Uh, what Bruton M's done up there with the new racetrack is unbelievable. And uh, it's by far my favorite racetrack to race on. Or go watch, by far. Greer Dragway, definitely familiar with Greer. I've made a few passes in the junior dragster at Greer Dragway. And wow. um, familiar with it, with the, whether it's the gasser shows or the outlaw pro mod stuff they've been doing there for decades. It's just crazy anybody will run pro mod at that track. Or even Bristol, honestly. I mean, uh, you know, Robbie, look, talk to me. How crazy was that old dog leg turn back in the day at Bristol? I haven't got to talk, any, talk to anyone that's been there for that, so tell me about it. Oh, my gosh. It seemed like, and I'm sure it was a little longer than this, but it seemed like you went through the finish line, and, and within 100 yards, the cars would disappear around the corner. Uh, it, was, it was an amazing time back then. Uh, the, the sound reverberating between those two mountains on each side, uh, it was just an unbelievable I experience back then. I was a little bit wilder back then, too. I've, I've calmed <laughs> down a, a whole lot since then but uh, yeah it was, it was an awesome track larry carrier who originally built that and started the ihra uh, just done a fantastic job uh, when they created bristol dragway i spent many a weekends up there during my lifetime or many so you mentioned your dad and some nascar racing you've mentioned racing yourself you got dylan behind the wheel now so for the stocks why it is motorsports important with the dealership, the business? How did it, in fact, all begin and you've become this racing family? It's it's kind of uh, ironic. My grandfather on my dad's side uh, was a farmer, uh, owned a logging business, was a contractor. He couldn't put air in a tire. He knew nothing about a vehicle, period, not anything. There was eight boys and one girl in my dad's family. Out of the eight boys, seven of them went into the car industry in some form or fashion. So my dad drag raced, he raced stock eliminator back in the, the 60s and, and 70s when that, that was before pro stock and that was a very popular class back then. Ran at the old Spartanburg dragway quite often, Greer, uh, Shady Side, Shuffle Town, and uh, but my dad, uh, they had, he he just couldn't make he couldn't make any money drag racing. So long story short, he got into the NASCAR side, and he originally got in with with James Hilton from Inman, South Carolina, just helping him at nights. Uh, got to going with him on the weekends. Wound up changing tires. And my dad changed rear tires for, for 30 of the 33 years that he was in NASCAR. Uh, he actually worked for Bud Moore for 28 of those years, only on the weekends. My dad still had the dealerships, but he would fly to the races, fly back Sunday night, Monday morning. Uh, but Bobby Allison, uh, Jeff Bodine, Brett Bodine, Dale Earnhardt, uh, Buddy Baker, Benny Parsons, Ricky Rudd, Lake Speed, uh, Jimmy Spencer, my dad all worked with those changed rear tires for those guys when he was with, with Bud Moore. Like I say, he'd done it for, for 33 years. And uh, my dad was named the uh, Skoll Copenhagen All-Pro Rear Tire Changer five years, uh, which was nobody's ever done that. He's, my dad's an awesome guy. Still is. Man, that, that is awesome. I mean, we, I mean, can we get your dad on the Zoom? <laughs> and, and talk to him a little bit, bring him down. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he's got some stories that I could definitely resonate with. My dad worked with a guy by the name of Gene Cromer and the 41 Willis, the Moonlighter. Yes. And uh, my, my dad's Melvin Kraft. He was his right-hand man. They're even back out there doing it again uh, right. right now in the Gasser scene. And I'm sure your dad's got some great stories from that time. Sure he does. He definitely does. And, and – and as soon as this, as soon as this virus is over with, we'll have him back at the dealership every day. Yeah. Sure. Him and my mom's well, married. Him and my mom's been married, I think, 62 years, 
and they've never spent this much time together. So if this virus don't hurry up and get over with, I'm not sure they're going to make it until their 63rd anniversary. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Folk, many folks are having those issues right now throughout the United States of America. I'm sure. I'm sure. We've seen all the memes where folks are like, "There's a strange woman in my house that I've never known before." So I'm sure that's going on. Well, look. I know when I get down south, definitely I'm taking a stop at Stocks Ford and checking it out. Now, I've got to hone in. You mentioned something a little while back in this conversation, Robbie, that you said you don't like the fuel cars anymore in effect what's what's changed over the time that you're not as interested in fuel maybe as you used to be i just remember the funny car bodies uh back in the 80s and, and early 90s uh you know like that mark oswald drove for motorcraft uh they just had more of a a stock appearing look that, than they do now and to be honest now, I just can't tell the difference between a Dodge Ford or, or a Chevrolet. They all just look the same and does do not resemble any of them. Uh, now, the nostalgia, funny cars, the I, I love that stuff. I just love seeing, seeing the, the old body styles. And, you know, I, I remember back in the day, you know, the dry hops from, from the funny cars. And, uh, wow, I mean, guys like D.A. Santucci, uh, a, a lot of those old guys, and those guys were, and I'm not saying the guys now are not. Those guys, could, they were drivers. They were, they were just unbelievable drivers because those things were ill and ill handling. See, in HRA, you've got someone here that's a little older, and you got someone as me that's a little younger, and we still want dry hops. We still want throttle wax. We still want stock appearing bodies, whether that's pro stock or funny car. Come on, NHRA. Listen, please. I agree. I Look, agree 100%. You're right now in top sportsman. I got to ask, are there any aspirations to really step up one to two levels and hop in a pro mod or hop in a pro stock and do that in drag racing? Man, I'd love to drive a pro mod car. That, that honestly would probably be my dream, but we need some money <laughs> and time. <laughs> Um, honestly, the dealership is a full-time job in and of itself, and I don't know that we could handle anything above what we've got now. So we spend, like I said, Dad said, you know, we're normally here at 7 o'clock to 6 o'clock, and then normally we're home and then in the garage till about 10 o'clock at night, if not later sometimes. So it's it's a full-time job between this place and, and racing. Um, but definitely, we can find some money, maybe a crew. I would definitely, definitely be down to drive a pro mod for sure. If you were in a pro mod, what would that pro mod be? I'm sure it's a Ford, but, you know, pro mod can be a lot of different makes and models and looks. You know, give me that dream pro mod. What would it look like? Man, I'm, whenever we built this new car, I, I didn't think there was no possible way that I could like my, you know, like a car better than my 67. This new car to me, the, the way the thing sits, I love it. So I'd probably do like an 18 Mustang again, same body style, but it had to be a nicer car. I'm 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 hard headed. I'm not just stuck in, in my ways. Um, so I would definitely be a, a you know a not just car, probably with a clutch too. That'd make it really fun, <laughs> right? Ooh, pro mod with a clutch. Yeah. Oh, wow, man! That, 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 I, just, um, I might not be the fastest one out there because it's not the way to go anymore. But it would be fun. <laughs> Look, I well, I will say I'm definitely in the club. Put the clutch back in the things and wow. get some driving in there. I'm 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 of that that persuasion. Get the clutch back in these door cars, definitely. So, you're drag racers. Y'all are businessmen. How in this time are you helping the community? Because everybody thinks drag racers, you know, you're absorbed with drag racing or your business, you're absorbed with your business. But I know a lot of drag racers. I know a lot of businessmen. And the businessmen that are drag racers and drag racers that are businessmen take care about their community. So what are y'all doing right now to Im impact the area of North Carolina that you're in? Well, as I said earlier, uh, you know, not just because we're involved in drag racing, but the drag racing community as a whole uh, are very generous people. They're very giving people. They're always willing to help one another, uh, especially if somebody's had an issue at the racetrack with their race car or whatever, and they can help them. You know, even our competitors, we help them, they help us. If we've got to change transmissions between around, 
everybody jumps in and tries to get it done. We don't want to see anybody not be able to make a next round because of a breakdown if, if we can help at all. But, you know, I, I will say that uh, the, the community that we're in, which is Tryon, North Carolina, it's Polk County, has been, uh, you know, they've supported us for 39 years uh, here. And, and like I say, when, when my dad bought this, really the only thing he wanted to do was get it back up running and, and, and sell it and probably go into another dealership because that's all he knew. But the, the citizens uh, of, of all of the surrounding counties have supported us for 39 years. And they were through some hard times. And, and you know, the citizens have had hard times. But we just, me and Dylan, my dad, uh, we just felt like we needed to reach out to, to people in our community and the surrounding towns. You know, if you stay home all day and, and watch the news, the sky's falling. Well, the sky's not falling. We're gonna get through this. But people need some hope. They, they need a little help in their life. And so, you know, basically what we put out on the internet is, you know, anybody needs a meal, we're gonna provide it. If you just need us to deliver, we will deliver it. If you can't pay for it, we'll pay for it. If you need groceries, you need medication, you need diapers, whatever the need is, Stotts Forward's gonna to try to meet that need for, for as long as we can. And, you know, I, I'll say this, we've, we've helped, we've, we've been fortunate enough, we've been blessed enough to be able to help a lot of people with meals, with groceries. Uh, we've had, even had some people that, that we provided hotel rooms for that, that have lost their home to foreclosure recently and, and some fires, things like that. So we're getting, we're getting the blessing from that. And I just thank the good Lord for allowing us to, to do that. He's blessed us here at Stotts Ford. We're not rich people by no means, but we've made a good living and we are more than proud, more than happy to, to, to help those in the community. And I've had, I've had some, other, some other companies within the community uh, that has come and donated money for, for me to, to distribute out. And the first thing I tell them is, you know, we'll take your money and we're going to use it for, for the good, but I'm, we're not going to police this. You know, if somebody calls in and they need something, we're going to provide that need. Now, if they're being honest with us, if they're being dishonest with us, that's between them and God. We're doing what we're supposed to do and rest is up to God. And like I say, we've got the blessing from, from being able to, to help these people by far. Gentlemen, thank you for doing that and for stepping up in your community. That is an awesome thing to hear. Look, the automotive industry, its landscape, it's drastically changing and doing so very quickly. You know, here in the future, Ford, other than really the Mustang, doesn't appear, doesn't appear to that they're going to have a car really in their lineup, but moving more to S SUVs and crossovers and closer to where we have electronic technology taking over the internal combustion engine. So on the front lines with you two at a dealership, owning a dealership, from the business side of it, from the technician side of it, what does the future of the automotive industry look like and how do you think that's going to impact motorsports, not just drag racing, but motorsports overall? Well, I think the biggest impact you're going to see is – Yes, Ford is getting away from, from the passenger cars other than the Mustang. We're coming out with some really exciting new lines on the SUV side. And if you look at the demographics and the reason Ford's doing this, it, that's where the market is going by, by far. The market is going to the, to the SUVs. They're much easier for especially older people to get in and out of, but the biggest change I think you're going to see in the next few years is electric vehicles. Uh, Ford's coming out with the Mach-E, which is a Mustang-inspired electric vehicle. We're going to have that uh, spring of 2021. Uh, we're actually 
that was a franchise that you had to buy into from Ford. You did not automatically get that just because you were a dealer. We opted to buy in. I think that's the future. Uh, so we will be having the, the Mach-E's will, will be on showrooms uh, in 2021, early 2021. We're actually taking reservations for those now, but Ford's coming with an electric 150. Uh, they're gonna have an electric Ranger and you're gonna see more of the SUVs go, go to the electric side also. And something that really intrigues me is like what Big Daddy Don Garlitz is doing with, with the electric dragster. That's, that thing's impressive. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I, I don't know that, that, that I'll see it in my lifetime, but uh, that's definitely the way motorsports is heading, I, I think, is towards electric vehicles. And I'll kind of touch on the service side a little bit, you know, as far as like the harder to work on, you know, the more electronics you get, the more computers there is. And, but Ford is honestly they're really good. Um, you know, they make all of our technicians keep current on tests. Um, we have, uh, you know, curriculums where they have to take stuff, but keep them updated on all that. So, so they're really, really good about keeping us updated on all that stuff. Yeah, Dylan, I mean, in the future, it might not be a Mustang Pro Mod. You might have to do a Ford Escape Pro Mod with nitrous on it. That might be the way to go. That's, that's the way it's trending, isn't it? <laughs> hey, Wild Willie Boris used to drive a Jeep. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Be, be the trendsetter. Uh, a SUV Pro Mod. That would be stellar. <laughs> so, guys, look. In the top sportsman ranks, and not just top sportsman, but in the sportsman ranks, who, what is a name out there? Who is an individual out there that you think more fans should know about, but they just don't get the exposure, they just don't get the time on TV? Who is that person or family out there that you think ought to be more known than they are in the sportsman ranks? Man, uh, there's a bunch of them, honestly. The, the sportsman ranks are full of, you know, really characters. I'm talking, you know, you've got like people like Anthony Bertozzi, man, he is a, he is a character. He is awesome. Got an awesome personality. John LaBoose, you know, Sandy Wilkins got an awesome personality. He is very good racer, does all of his own stuff, builds his own engines, everything. Um, so, so that sports and racing is full of, is full of people that, that people need to know about. They're really, really good people. Jeffrey, I'll throw some out there. Uh, Jeffrey Barker, uh, a great friend of ours, two time top sportsman world champion. Uh, we talk to him often. Uh, we throw ideas off of him. Super, super smart guy. Uh, was already very smart before he started hanging out with Stevie Fast Jackson. Now he's, he's up elevated. To, he's <laughs> elevated it a couple notches. So he's got way above our pay grade. But uh, <laughs> super good friend. But like Dylan said, there's just some awesome personalities out. Royce Lee Freeman, Elite Motorsports. No bigger character than 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 Royce Lee, uh, great friend, but uh, yeah, just a, there's a lot of a lot of a lot of good people in sportsman drag racing, and I, you know, my uncle Larry Stock, my dad's baby brother, uh, his daughter's got a super stalker, his granddaughter's got a stalker. He's been involved in drag racing all his life. Uh, Quain, you know, my cousin Quain with the Southeast Gasters Association, doing a really good job with that. So. You know, Stotts have been in racing a, a long time, and it looks like we're going to be in it for a while. Definitely seems like when you say the last name Stott, it's equivalent to racing. That's pretty cool, guys. So, folks, look, it's been great to hang out with Robbie and Dylan this afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed this interview. Uh, guys, look, to you, I'm going to give you the last words for your fans for your partners, and also to your competitors. Go on the last words. Go ahead. I got this. <laughs> um, so just as far as, as partners, you know, you got Jerry Haas Race Cars. They built a car, um, do an awesome job for us. Oakley Motorsports um, builds the engines. Uh, Marco Abruzzi Transmissions, um, Moroso Oil Pumps, Greg Slack at Converge Design Specialties. Um, you know, Stotts Ford, man, all the guys that work at Stotts Ford. Without them, we couldn't go racing on the weekends. So, you know, we got 33 guys and girls that are they're here every week, whether we are or not, taking care of this place. So we appreciate all of them. Um, I don't know if you got anybody and, else. Yeah, one of not only the Stotts Ford employees, because like I say, they look after things uh, when we are going racing and do an awesome job doing it. 
But uh, I wish my dad could have been here today. He would, yeah. he would really uh, love being involved in this. And, and he'll be back as soon as this virus still is over with. Uh, he'll be back in. But uh, he still goes to every single race with us. When that motorhome leaves, he's going to be in it. Uh, he still loves it, uh, gets excited, and gets pretty ag aggravated when we get beat. <laughs> but uh, he, he, he's just, he loves to win. And uh, it's been in his, he's done it his whole life. And it's just a thrill for me and Dylan. You know, it's three generations that, that get to, to not only work together, but we get to race together. And uh, that's uh, that's pretty awesome to have, have my dad uh, around for, for that long and be able to keep enjoying it with us. And the last thing is, and this is for all the American people, we're one day closer to this thing being over with. <laughs> Stotts Ford, Drag Racing TV. Well, guys, there it is. That's been Robbie and Dylan Stott. I'm the Monday morning racer, Lee Craft for Drag Racing TV. All of this brought to you by strutmasters.com. And by the way, have you driven a Ford lately? Take care, drag racing fan. <laughs>